Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts to open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Then God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let us separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so God called the dome the sky. And it was an evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called the seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth be forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing forth and bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And it was evening, and it was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky, and separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky, to give a light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. And stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give them light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And it was evening and it was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters spring forth, swarms of living creatures, 
and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the water swarm and in every winged bird of every kind. <clears throat> and God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And it was evening, and it was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle, creeping things, wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish in the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the world animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created humankind in his image, in the image of God he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sea, over a living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps to the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he made, and indeed it was very good. And it was evening, and it was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations and heavens and the earth. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 8. You can find it in your bulletin or on page 592 in the Book of Common Prayer. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set up in your courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek him out. And you have made him but little lower than the angels. You adore him with glory and honor. You have given him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen. Even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea. And the are the lights and the paths of the sea. O Lord our governor. How exalted is your name in all the world. The second lesson is from Saint, Saint 2 Corinthians 13, 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of, of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Savior.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Well, say, it's all about love. God so loves the world that God gives God's only Son that all may not perish but rather have everlasting life. And Jesus invites us to a way of love, a way of living, of generosity, of forgiveness, of sharing, of inclusion, of welcome, uh, of bringing together. And so the life of God that we turn to for all that we need, the life of God that is our hope, the life of God that fulfills us and completes us in a way that nothing else will. As I've been fond of saying, Volvo had a commercial, this, guy, this car will save your soul. It won't. It's a really fine car. It won't save your soul. The, the, the place in us for God will be satisfied by nothing less, no thing less than God, not by, by money or, or, or drugs or, or you know, riches, reputation, all that stuff is not going to fill the place in us that needs God, which is all of us. And the God we need is Trinity, is relationship. Father-loving Son, Son-loving Spirit, Spirit-loving Father. It's relational. God is relational. God's very life is relational. And what Christ risen, ascended, over the church of the ascension christ ascended is that christ takes our human nature into the dynamic eternal loving life of god and we've got a place there too in christ and so we look to be the communion of saints that we live and live eternally in god's love father son spirit dynamic moving like a a celestial dance, if you will, that we're invited to share in him, in Christ, who shares, if you will, shares the whole family with us, shares the life with us that's never taken away as we become one with it. And the way we know it, the way we live it, is in love, is in giving love, is in being generous, in forgiveness, in in inspiring others and sharing the gifts that we've been given it's it's an economy it, it, it's a two-way street it's coming and going always and the more open we are to it the more fully we participate in it the more deeply we know it the more capably we can share it the life and love of god and so one of the aspects of this love is it's a perfect love that the persons and that's the word we use the persons are never turned into something else. In other words, Father remains Father in the life of the Trinity. Son remains Son in the life of the Trinity. Spirit remains Spirit. Their individuality is intact, and yet they're perfectly at one. You know, I think about how can we envision this in day-to-day in -day terms, and maybe at its best, say, a marriage, for instance, where the two as we say in the, the marriage rite, become one, become one flesh. That's biblical, and yet they are distinct personalities. One of the great temptations in marriage, I think, is to try to turn the other into yourself, right? I mean, you know, if you only get the right taste in food and the right temperature for a room to be, the right place to go for a vacation, I mean, only just see it my way, what a better relationship it would be. But instead, to maintain that distinctness. That's the beauty of it. Totally at one and yet distinct, not overtaking the other. Likewise, in a love relationship, say parent to child, that the family can be totally at one and yet 
you know, father doesn't become son, and son doesn't have to become father. They get to have their own identity. They get to have their own life, and yet to be perfectly at one. So again, father is not son, son is not spirit, spirit is not father, and yet father is God, son is God, and spirit is God. Dynamic, moving, alive, in love. And so that's what we're invited to, is something of a relationship of love that saves us, that makes us whole, that draws us out, that engages us with others. As John Donne says, no man, no person is an island. We're not in this as a solo performance, and we're at our best with others. The sum is greater than the total of the parts. And yeah, there are moments alone, Jesus himself goes out, wanders in the wilderness for 40 days, goes off by himself at Gethsemane, and yet his life, his love is shared, and he's constantly inviting others into it to be participants in this life and love that we are to know that saves, it saves us, it saves others. And the, the great you know, secret sometimes is that in helping others, you help yourself. In helping others, you help yourself. When you can be generous, you kind of participate in that generosity and you become something more. When you love others, you participate in that love and you become something more. And that we may likewise know God in us more fully as we are literally God's ministers. And we, in baptism, we, by our gifting, have been graciously blessed with gifts. And I say that not just in abstract principles, but I mean, I know you. I know your gifts. I know you, what you're able to do. I've seen it. You have particular gifts to be shared as well as a gift of us here. And as we said, small but mighty in this little, little band of a dozen or two dozen, three dozen people, we can do amazing things, amazing things. I mean, Jesus did pretty well with 12, right? I mean, he did pretty well. So we too are called to share in love and to be community together and to engage the truths that have been offered to us. And to me, that's the one word kicker in this gospel. Go, go therefore, go out into the world, go out into your communities, whether that's your family community, your residential community, your work community, your neighborhood, the people that you have opportunities to serve. Go therefore, go therefore and share the love that you have known. And the love that we have come to know and that we celebrate today is triune, is three and yet one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God of God made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and crushed by He suffered death and was spared. On the third day, he rose again in our cross of the scriptures. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are 43, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. 
Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and science. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our words may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let life perpetually shine on us. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also have a share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers for Trish, Jim, Kathy, Timmy, Scott, Holly, Jaden, Ben, and Cooper, as well as those involved in the crash on Highway 27 this morning. We celebrate the birthdays of Kim King and Graham Priest. We celebrate the anniversaries of Anne and R.J. Ratliff, and we remember the deaths of Catherine Tano, Betty Dews, and John Fogel. I ask your prayers for those on our diocesan intercessory prayer list, Trinity Church Danville, the Reverend Joe Chambers, Rector. Today in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the bishop, clergy, and laity of the Episcopal Anglican Providence of Alexandria. I invite your own prayers and thanksgiving, silently or aloud. Judy Ratliff. Almighty God, you have revealed to your church your eternal being of glorious majesty and perfect love as one God and trinity of persons. Give us grace to continue steadfast in the confession of this faith and constant in our worship of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in our goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share his name. from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of our goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. 
you created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you as Heavenly Father, having loved his own who are in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he gave given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts to your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup 
they become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice of Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and life. And grant that we find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Patrick, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. gifts of God for the people of God. pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart 
through Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.